Hey guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Welcome back. Uh, to wrap up our How to Refinish a Foam Warbird series, I thought what I would do is give you guys a uh, just a post-flight review of how the airplane flies, how I have it set up, let you know my CG location that I converged on as well as the, the control surface deflections, and talk about just a couple small issues that I ran into. I've got 13 flights now on the airplane and I love it. It flies awesome. Uh, the airplane has good speed, good vertical with the 4258 motor and 5S pack. It's a lot of fun to fly. In its Lady Alice livery, man, the airplane looks awesome in the air. I love how it looks and uh, you know, this quickly has become my regular weekend flyer, which is really what I bought it for originally. First of all, in terms of the control deflections, I found that actually a half an inch on all of the surfaces ended up giving me exactly what I was looking for in terms of the controllability. So that's a half an inch on the elevator, half an inch on the aileron. Uh, and ended up getting half an inch on the rudder. I was wanting more, uh, but I wasn't able to get it based on the linkage setup. That ends up being plenty, it'll even knife edge with that amount of rudder, surprisingly enough. So I was happy with that. I've got two settings on the flaps. We've got the mid setting that's at about three quarters of an inch of deflection measured at the wing root. Uh, and then full flap is at about an inch and three quarters. In terms of the CG, the factory recommended CG at 110 millimeters from the leading edge of the wing root uh, ended up being perfect. I was a little leery of that, you know, these Chinese ARF manufacturers really like to give you a tail heavy airplane. So I started out a little bit nose heavy and found that it was really nose heavy, surprisingly. What was happening is in the turns, the nose was dropping pretty pretty severely, which is very indicative of a nose heavy airplane. As I moved it back, the CG, it got better and better until I ended up back at the factory CG location. In terms of the weight of the airplane, we came out at about five and three quarter pounds, uh, less the flight battery. I'm using a uh, 5S 5800. This is the, the Zippy LiPo, the 30C series, and I've had good luck with those uh, from Hobby King. I've uh, been using them in a couple applications. And for this, man, it gives me a whole lot of flight time, which makes this airplane really fun. One issue that I had was with the retracts. The, the factory retracts, and I didn't report on this on my original review, but when I pulled the wings out of the box, looking at the retracts, the mounting holes in the retract mounting plates, or the side plates of the retracts themselves, were cracked and I didn't think too much of it at the time I figured that the material would be hard enough that it wouldn't be an issue however uh, it ended up being that material was really brittle and it couldn't stand any kind of load at all. A couple of flights in the landing gear were virtually falling out of the airplane the side plates were so cracked up so quick uh, email to Motion RC and they were really cool they completely replaced the retract sent brand new ones and the side plate material on these these retracts are much more correct uh, it's more the the glass filled nylon that it needs to be versus a, a brittle kind of ABS plastic of the other uh, mounting plates I ultimately though decided to just replace them with metal side plates there's a company called small parts CNC that makes a metal uh, retract side plate that's a drop-in fit for these FMS retracts. So $40 and I think that was money well spent because I will never have to worry about this again. The only thing is when you replace the side plates, if you go that direction, you can't over tighten the screws, otherwise you'll bind up the motor. So use some Loctite, tighten up, down the screws and back them off, maybe half or quarter turn uh, and you should be good to go. One last thing I'd like to mention is that you probably noticed that some of the popcorn was starting to pop through in some of the shots. Uh, it's been really hot here in San Diego. So we go through this effort. It's really advised to keep the airplane in the shade as much as possible because that popcorn does pop through because of the heat. EPO sucks. I hate it, but unfortunately we have to deal with it. There is a, a pretty cool shade uh, that's designed for these size of airplanes. I found it on sale from Diamond Hobby a while back. I picked one up. 
It's a nice thing to have, especially if you don't have a shade structure at your field. With all that said, let's give you a sneak peek of how this airplane flies. And if you want to see the full flight video, you can check that here. Check it out, and then we will touch base and wrap this up. So there we have it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video series helpful. Uh, I have more tutorials planned and in the works, so uh, please uh, subscribe to get those when they're posted. Otherwise, I've got a full article on my blog, thercgeek.com, with uh, links to the products that were used in the build. And if you missed my series on how to refinish a foam warbird, uh, you can catch that here. Uh, otherwise, thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.